Hello and welcome to yet another talk. Today I will be talking about the GitOps, the principles, the logic and objectives and what's or not. And most importantly, I will do a very quick demo. I cannot do much, it's 20 minutes, but hey, that's what it is. So, a uh, quick introduction. Uh, my name is Victor. I am Victor Farsik and I work for a company called Codefresh. We are a company behind uh, some DevOps tools and CI and CD, everything as a service and uh, self-hosted as well. Uh, anyway, I belong to a couple of foundations, a couple of groups, uh, Docker captains, Google developer experts and uh, CD Foundation Ambassadors. I, like everybody else, I have a blog post. Go and read it. Uh, I have, uh, I'm a co-host of a podcast called DevOps Paradox. We do podcasts, we do live streams on YouTube, some, some guests invited and so on and so forth. What else? Yes, I published a bunch of books. If you can expense things, uh, go and buy them. Buy all of them. Uh, and if you don't like reading, if you like watching, I have a courses in Udemy as well. And that's about it. That's my introduction. Uh, and now we can go back to um, the subject at hand. And we will be talking, as I already said, about uh, GitOps. What it is, what are the principles, objectives, and what's so on not. Okay. Now, what is GitOps? GitOps assumes that a version control system, or VCS, is the only source of truth. Now, since all version controls we're talking about are based on Git, the name is GitOps and not, I don't know, VCS Ops, maybe? Anyways, I will start using Git instead of VCS throughout the rest of this, uh, even though theoretically you could apply GitOps principles with, let's say, SVN or Perforce. But why would you do that? Who uses that anymore? Anyway, it can be done. Uh, but the real question is, what does it mean that Git is the only source of truth? To many, that sounds like a question with an obvious answer. Yet, many are not really applying that seemingly simple logic. So let's start with the simple question. Why would Git be the only source of truth? Everything we do today is defined as code, at least among software engineers, right? Now, before you start wondering what a software engineer is, let me give you a simple definition. If your work is related to the development of software, you are a software engineer. It does not matter whether you write code of an application, if you're testing, if you're deploying apps, if you're working on infrastructure, operating system, uh, or anything else. You are a software engineer, and as such, you write code. If you don't, then you're in the wrong industry. Anyways, what you're not doing is clicking buttons over there, right? You do not execute all the tests manually by clicking links and filling in fields on a web page. You're not managing infrastructure through some UI. You are, if you're doing stuff without writing code, you are in the wrong industry. You should write code. Actually, okay, that's not correct. You must be writing code or consider a different profession. You're hopefully young and uh, if code scares you, there is still time to change your calling. You can become a lawyer, a real estate agent or whatever else you're more comfortable with. If you choose to stay in the software industry, you are choosing to write code. Now, the only acceptable usage of UIs is for informational purposes. They're useful when observing the state of something. They're great for correlating metrics through dashboards. They're helpful when searching through logs to find the cause of an issue. But when it comes to defining something, we write code instead of clicking buttons. Code can be many different things and people differ in their interpretation of what is and what isn't code. So let me simplify that for you as well. Code is something that can be interpreted by machines. If you write applications in Java, Go, Python, or any other programming language, you're writing code. That much is clear, right? Now, if you are writing executable tests, they're code as well. If you're writing build scripts, they're also code. Heck, even if all you do is write YAML files, 
That's also code. If it can be interpreted by machines, it is code. Now that we established that everyone, you included, either writes code or is planning to change the profession, the logical outcome is that all that is stored in a version control system and that the only one that makes sense today is Git. If everything we do is if everything we do related to machines is defined as code and all the code is stored in Git, it stands to reason that Git is the only source of truth. The code of our applications is in Git. The tests are in Git. The configurations are in Git and everything else is in Git. Even the documentation is today stored in Git so that machines can convert it into HTML, PDFs or whichever other formats our users expect. That means that, among other things, the full definition of any aspect of our system is in Git. So how do we operate the systems? By making, by making changes to Git. Hence, the expression GitOps means that the operations are performed through Git. So the two fundamental principles of GitOps are everything is described as code and Git is the only source of truth. All that, means, all that means that we, humans, are defining the desired state, while machines are making sure that the actual state becomes the same as the desired state. Machines are converging the actual into the desired state. As a result, you are not touching clusters, especially production. All you can do and should do is change the desired state by modifying files and pushing those changes to Git. Now, what I'm going to show you is one possible implementation of a part of the process, only a part, and that part will be related to deployments. And for that, I'm going to use Argo CD today. Why Argo CD? Because it's awesome. Why it's awesome? Because it's great. <laughs> Anyways, we will be using Argo CD, and I will show you a quick demo of um, how it works. Uh, and just remember, Argo CD is a tool designed to help us deploy applications in Kubernetes based on GitOps principles. So let's go through the demo and see what we'll get. Okay, uh, where am I? I need this, I need this. Okay, now uh, what I'm going to do is Define a git define a production environment, store it in git, and see what happens when I change uh when I store something in git, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is kubectl um uh, create namespace production. I want to run my applications in production namespace. Namespace called production, right? Uh now I'm going to go to this uh no, I'm not gonna go there. I'm already there. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a couple of files. What I, but before I do that, let me first explain. Uh, in this demo, I will assume that there are two applications in production, one called DevOps Toolkit and the other one called DevOps Paradox. And I'm going to show you something related to those files and that is Helm Templates uh, DevOps Toolkit. Now, this is a definition of Argo CD application. Now, this does not define the application itself. It does not contain information about uh, the deployment and the service and the ingress and what's or not, none of those things. All that is stored in a Git repository. What I'm doing with, and that Git repository is repository of the application itself. You know, the repository where the code is and tests and build scripts and what's and pipelines. And in this case, uh, everything basically related to application except the information that Argo CD needs. And what Argo CD needs essentially is a name. I'm gonna call it DevOps Toolkit. And the most important part is this one, uh, rep repo URL. This tells Argo CD, hey, there is a repository called uh, with the address, this one, DevOps Toolkit. That's, that's where you will find information about uh, this specific application. And uh, you will find that information in a directory called Helm. And by the way, when, uh, when you try to deploy this application, 
overwrite those Helm values, uh, no, actually the default Helm values with those. And those are that I want in this case to run the latest uh, tag of the image. And I want ingress host to be set to this address, right? And I want that application to run in the namespace called production. And that should be deployed in the local Kubernetes cluster, the same one where Argo CD is running, right? It could be a different cluster. And finally, sync policy set to automated, meaning, hey, whenever I change something in this Git repository, please make sure that that, that is my desired state. And please make sure that the actual state, the cluster, is uh, converged to it, right? So this is what automated means. And then we have self-heal set to true, meaning that uh, if anybody changes anything directly, manually inside of the cluster or automatically inside of the cluster that uh, differs from the definition of this application stored here, correct that, right? Always have whatever is defined in this repo and prune set to true, meaning that if I ever delete this application, it will be removed from, from the cluster. Okay, and then there is uh, this file, the second application, Paradox. That was Paradox. It's the same thing. I'm just defining a different Git repository. A different uh, Helm variable will be all written with a different uh, ingress host. And that's about it. It's almost the same. And I need one more. So those are all definitions of individual applications. Hey, I want to have this here, that here. Uh, go to this repository for this application, that repository for that application. And then there is this one called apps. This is a uh, definition of the production environment itself. This is application of applications. And it says, hey, look, uh, same logic as before. Uh, a, a production itself should be defined in this, uh, this repository and in the directory Helm. And that repository, as you saw a minute ago, uh, and this directory contains those two applications, references to those two applications. So this production references repository, Git repository that contains production, which in turn references two, in this case, applications, and the rest is the same as the others. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is, what should I do? Uh, yes, kubectl apply file name, uh, apps, right? So I'm going to apply this one single application, this single definition of where production environment is. And I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to tell it where are the applications, any of those things, just the reference to the production, to the repository containing definition of the production environment. That's it. That's created. Now let's take a look at HTTP uh -huh, Argo cd.ingresshost.chip.io. This is, here we go. And you can see that it's progressing, right? So what happened is that we created, I created this definition, production. And that, defin that application or application of applications is uh, referencing this Git repository. Uh, let me go back actually. And then in that Git repository, there are references to this repository and this repository. So think of this as the whole environment and those two being applications in those two environments. And it is still progressing and it just finished, right? If I go to the production environment, I can see that I have two applications running in production, DevOps Toolkit and DevOps Paradox. If I go to DevOps Toolkit, uh, I can see all the Kubernetes components, let's say, definitions, uh, objects uh, that the application has. And none of those things is, I haven't sh shown you the definition of the service deployment ingress and all those things. I, I didn't do that because that I didn't create any of those things. It went to the repository of the application itself uh, and it found it. And you can see here that the head Actually, let me open it, right? It went here to this repository. This is the repository of my application. It has all I need. And it found this directory and it found templates and it found the deployment ingress and all that stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do next to demonstrate that this does not work only one time, I'm going to go and open this uh, templates DevOps toolkit uh, YAML. And I'm going to say, look, how about we deploy a new release? How about we do that? 
and we can deploy a new release by, for example, changing the tag. So I'm going to put here 2.9.17, right? Uh, I shouldn't have latest uh, there anyways, right? That was a bad idea uh, from the start in any case. Anyway, so um, I'm having here the tag and uh, I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to, what am I going to do? Yes, I'm going to push this change. Git commit minus M um, new release, uh, git push. So the only thing I'm doing, I'm not interacting with Kubernetes in, in any form or way. I could be even not having Kubernetes access. I'm just pushing changes to Git. That's all I'm doing. So uh, I'm going now to watch uh, for the image itself and see what do I have there. And you can see right now it is still running the latest, the previous definition, right? It didn't figure out yet uh, what is happening. So what I'm going to do is stop this watching just for a second. I'm going to go back to open uh, Argo CD. Uh, I'm going to bring it on the screen here. There we go. If I go to production, DevOps Toolkit. If I go to the deployment, if I go to the definition, I can see where is it? Where are you? Where are you? Here. Not yet there. Where are you? I cannot find the manifest, the part about the image. Template here, latest, right? This is what Argo CD is still running. This is the old release. So while waiting for that, uh, let's do this. Let me draw you what's happening. Okay, so we have a Kubernetes cluster. Let me change the color as well. We have a Kubernetes cluster, K8S. This was my cluster. And the only thing I had when I started was Argo CD. CD installed, nothing else. And then also before I started, I have a repository. This is Git, by the way. Repository with one application, APP1 and repository with the second application, APP2. And then I created a new repository called production. And in that repository, I defined that my production should have two applications, one with a reference to this repository, a repository of one application, and the other one with reference to that application, and with some values overwritten. And then I, a person, uh, applied, took this definition and told Argo CD that it exists. That's the only thing that I did manually, right? From there on, once I, once I told Argo CD that there is a Git repository with the definition of the production, it went there and it fetched, <coughs> excuse me, all the, all the definitions. And then it found out that there are follow-up links so it went and fetched the definitions from this repository and from this repository. And then it figured out that I would like to have in production, uh, what is this, APP1, uh, one, one application and another application. And then what I did last is that I changed one of the values here to deploy a new image. And that means uh, that Argo CD by now should have figured it out. Uh, it should have deployed uh, application one version two. In the cluster, it should have shut down the old release, did rolling updates, kind of deployments, what's or not. And that's, that's what it did. It now has two applications, one being updated because I changed one of the parameters. Um, of uh, of the top and all that means that this all this where is it here all that is uh the desired desired state and that state is in git 
And that is the only thing that we are working on. Humans are only operating on the level of Git. And this is the actual state, which is our cluster, and we don't have access to it. We are not touching the actual state. Uh, Argo CD is making sure that the actual state is the same as, as uh, the desired state stored in Git. Now let's go back to the terminal. Here, if I go back to uh, Argo CD, you can see that 2.19 was deployed. And if I go back to my terminal, uh, I can show you that 2.9.17 is deployed. Uh, while I was drawing stuff, Argo CD figured out that um, it should deploy a new release, and it did it. And I haven't touched my Kubernetes cluster. The only thing I did was interact with um, with Git, redefine, redefine the desired state. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Victor Farsik, and uh, you will find my information different places. Google me, right? If you have money to spend, buy the latest book uh, or the course in Udemy called uh, DevOps Toolkit Catalog Patterns and Practices. Thank you so much. Hey, hello. I think we have a few minutes for questions. So if anybody has anything to ask, shoot. The nastier the question is, the better. Uh, so Adam is asking, um, do most tools like Argo CD apply, Cube, Cuttle apply? I guess it's a typo that you want to say natively, Adam. Um, so yeah, uh, Argo CD, for example, allows uh, naively. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by naively. I will still guess that you mean natively. Uh, if not, clarify. But anyways, Argo CD supports, you know, the most common formats for defining Kubernetes resources. So it could be Helm, it could be Q, it could be Kubernetes YAML, you know, the typical one. It could be JSON-Net, it could be a few others, I think. Um, uh, and it's basically up to us to define what the state should be, right? Uh, it's, Argo CD is almost, it's, it's a bit dumb, right? It just, it is applying the state. It is changing the actual state to comply to whatever is what that we defined in Git, in whichever Kubernetes, in whichever format that Kubernetes or one of the tools working with Kubernetes can understand. Um, so Roman asks, how would you compare Argo CD to Jenkins X? Uh, they are completely different in what they're trying to accomplish. Uh, Argo CD is uh, doing only uh, deployments, right? It is deploying applications. It is changing the state of your cluster. While Argo CD, uh, sorry, while Jenkins X is closer to being a continuous delivery pipeline and then objective similar to Argo CD being part of what Jenkins X does. So Jen scope of Jenkins X. Just like scope of, of uh, the product that I'm working on, like Codefresh and then many other tools, or even Jenkins, right? The scope is much bigger. Argo CD is just concerned uh, of applying the state, defining it inside your clusters. That's all it does. So the major difference is in the scope, I think. So normally, if you have a CD tool like Jenkins X, Codefresh, this or that, you would. Uh, your CD tool would push changes to Git, and then Argo CD, uh, and when I say push changes, I mean build application, run tests, uh, do this, create a release, do many, many things. And then when the time comes for the pipeline to deploy something, it wouldn't be deploying anything. It would be making changes to Git repository that defines the environment where you want to deploy, and then asynchronously Argo CD or Flux would do the actual deployment. Uh, let's see more questions. If uh, from Kara, if you would like more GitOps, I've got a session next on GitOps, Kubernetes, and secret management. Yes, Kara is awesome. Go to her session. That must be good. Uh, Matthew, does Argo CD have a mechanism to pull up configs from SSM, ECD console into secrets config maps? Uh, not uh, de that depends really. 
Uh, Argo CD itself doesn't have that capability. So the Kubernetes definitions that you're defining in the Git that Argo CD is applying would need to create that mechanism either to through having a CRD, usually CRD or some kind of operator, right? Um, Matthew Frenet, are Git triggers in Argo CD specific to the part property of each application so that we can use mono repos with all our application specs within the same repo? I think that you started wrong. There are no uh, triggers, Matthew, in Argo CD. And this is, this is the part that I think is very important. Nothing, you're not sending webhooks or triggering anything from your Git so that Argo CD knows about it. Argo CD is polling periodically your Git repositories, those that you registered, and specific directories of those repositories. So uh, direct answer to your question is yes. It can be monorepo, it can be not monorepo, it doesn't matter really what, which, how you organize your Git repos, as long as you tell Argo CD, okay, look, this is the repository, this is the branch, and uh, this is the directory where the definition of this specific application or this specific environment is located. You're not triggering anything towards uh, Argo CD. Argo CD is polling information. Now, the reason why that is important, in some cases, pool mechanism is not, not very effective. In some others, it's very important. And in case of Argo CD, it is important because uh, if Argo CD is pulling data from your Git repositories, that means that you can lock your, especially production cluster, you can lock it. Basically, nobody or nothing has to have access to your, uh, to your production cluster, right? Neither humans, nor CD tools, nor anything. And that mechanism is very useful in this context, uh, simply because you can make it really safe. You can say, hey, nobody has access if you don't want to give anybody access. And that for production is really, really important, I think. Um, okay, Raman says, Roman says, got it? Yeah, nice to hear from you, Roman. Haven't seen you in a month or something. Anybody else? Any question, I'm answering any question. Doesn't matter how, even if I, if I don't know the answer, I'm gonna invent it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I see that Matthew is uh, sending the link. Yeah, external secrets for uh, as answer to O'Donnell. Anybody else? You have two more minutes officially until this is finished. So anyway, while we're tr trying to think of a question or you already gave up on questions, anyways, uh, check out Argo CD. It's really cool. It's open source. I'm not selling you anything. Uh, if you're interested in where I work right now, Codefresh, uh, go there, go to codefresh.io. It's free. I mean, you get a free account, unlimited builds forever for life. Uh, you can give us money if you want, but there is a free version, completely free. So check it out as well. Um, I think it's a good one. That's the reason why I joined. So, you have one more minute. Last chance for a question. Nobody? Okay. Oh, uh, there is Matthew. Any relation to Tecton? Uh, for Argo CD, uh, no, no, really, no relation to Tecton. Uh, if you're if you're asking about Argo CD, no relation to Tecton. Uh, simply, there are no pipelines, right? It's just an uh, operator that watches your Git repositories and applies. Uh, no, not only applies, but monitors your Git repository, checks what changed, compares those changes with the rules that you set up. You can set up rules, kind of like you cannot do this, you can do this, and if passes the rules, that applies them. So there is no Tecton because for Argo CD, there are no pipelines. All it does is watch Git repository, checks the changes and applies them. Uh, so no Tecton. Tecton is cool, but not in this context. Uh, oh, okay, da David, can I reuse that operator code that monitors git changes and does other actions custom? 
Uh, with Argo CD, no, but you can take the code from Argo CD and use it, uh, reshuffle it a bit. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said before, Kara is coming, so go and listen to her, Kara. She, she's more interesting than I am. I can, I can tell you that in advance. Um, thank you, everybody. Glad to be here. Cheers. <laughs>